us. This this podcast, I thought we would never get to do it. <laughs> there was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our eighth, ninth attempt at trying to get together to talk about Death Note. I think round so, round that yeah definitely. And uh, I think part of the reason on my end was I hate this movie. Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, I get it. See, I'm I'm opposed to that diametrically because I love yeah, this movie. I don't understand why. So, have you read? It's a weird the manga <laughs> or watched the anime. I haven't. No, I haven't seen any other Death Note um, media besides this movie. I'm just familiar with like the general concept. That's okay. about it. Yeah. Okay. What did you know about it going into it? Anything? Uh, I just knew there's a book and you write someone's name in it and they die and the guy gets the book. That's That's about as much as I knew. Okay. So I read the manga going into the movie and that is way better than uh the Netflix movie okay. in my opinion. There's there's some weird stuff in it and it gets a little slow in the middle and there's right. the cringy like male female dynamics that I think happen in manga a lot in anime where yeah. it's like female characters are just uh like items is that the right word props almost yeah yeah props and uh so that that's a little weird but it's still way more interesting it's almost like uh in breaking bad where like vince gilligan would write the characters into a really tough spot and then work a way for them to get out of it is what they did Mm -hmm. in the manga where it was like it would just get more and more complicated, more and more difficult for him to work his way out. And everything he did, there was a counter to it. And it was just like the whole thing was mm-hmm. very uh, like in, not intense, but like you just kind of stressful. You're like, oh, how's this going to happen? How's this going to work? This this seems like the end. And then there would be a somewhat logical resolution to all of that. Okay. Where the Netflix movie yeah. did not feel like it had any of that. <clears throat> no, not really. It's um I think it's a very a very different beast, like from the ground up to the point where I wonder why they kept the, the characters' names and like the same sort of core concept, but not really. It's it's a lot of things with like um sort of international adaptations like this where I wonder why they don't adapt because like the cultural the cultural background of who is telling that story and the culture that bursts that kind of story and that kind of storytelling Mm -hmm. doesn't always translate well to a different cultural sensibility, which can really often be seen in like anime adaptations to Western Hollywood movies. They're, they're never really good because they always think like the Western Hollywood movie, the sort of confinements of that. Yeah. I didn't understand that either. Why? Like, it's, they don't follow the story, really. So it seems like, mm-hmm. why not just make the American version? Why not have another Death Note and then allow these new characters to play out this story and you'd be fine. You wouldn't be constrained to trying to stay true or, you know, you wouldn't have as many complaints. Like, people would be upset that you're not doing the actual thing. Yeah. But you're still not doing what it is. You're you the the storyline. They, they have done the actual thing, right? Haven't they done a live action version? I think there's there's been like a live action Japanese adaptation of this actual yeah. story. And the, the the core concept of the Death Note is so not uh vague, but it's so wide. Like if you can throw that into any situation. Yeah. And I actually think that this is a situation that would apply interestingly to like an american kind of story with a, like a, just a generic high school story that has this going for it but i think they should have borrowed from mm-hmm. the anime a little bit more i know bits and pieces of the about the manga and the anime uh, i think light is supposed to be like basically like a super genius and like a really is he supposed to be really popular and cool or is he kind of too smart for everyone kind of thing 
Like, is he is he a really popular kid in the manga or no? He's like, uh, he's well, he's super smart. He's like one of the smartest people in the world, in the manga. Then okay. he is like the perfect ladies man. He can get any date with supermodels and all this different type of stuff. Uh, they don't, but he's still right. kind of a loner. He doesn't really have friends, but I think people like him. Like, I think he doesn't have friends on his own okay. choice. But he, he doesn't really mm-hmm. right, hang yeah, out with his, anybody. Because I, I think, yeah, I think they chose a very on-the-nose way of going for this, which is like the um, the loser, outcast, uh, awkward, n- not quite nerd, but like yeah. loser kid who gets bullied and picked on. I think it would have been interesting to give the really popular guy who was, who's on top of the world mm. this sort of moral thing yeah. and then have him be like trying to do it for moral reasons like we're going to kill all the criminals and I'm going to make this perfect world and have it go to his head and make him go crazy like that's a really that's a far more interesting moral sort of quandary that you have to deal with and like you could show the degradation of that character but there's no real this movie doesn't really have any change for the characters like this this concept this this book this note in no way alters i mean it alters these characters lives yeah. uh, but it sorry, doesn't change the... them at all which makes no sense <laughs> my uh the audio keeps messing up on my end and it'll you'll be talking and then it'll oh, yeah. slow down and then it'll speed really fast up so i i, I kind of missed what you said there but <laughs> The uh, oh, you're saying that a really popular kid would be interesting to see their yeah the change in them because yeah because this movie doesn't really have yeah this I think uh, book change the characters the characters just stay the same when realistically this kind of thing entering their lives would completely upset everything they know and believe and think and feel. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't seem to bother Light until towards the end where he gets a little more conflicted mm-hmm. about it. But his girlfriend is like way into murdering everyone, which never, which doesn't yeah, make any she's, sense to me. She's the weirdest character, the weirdest character in a movie. It's it's weird to mix like she seems to get aroused every time she kills somebody or even by the concept of killing somebody. And it just makes her feel really cartoonish. And then that they make her like this evil mastermind. When the characters, I don't, I've seen this movie, I think four or five times now. And the characters just kind of, it's pretty (laughs) crazy. These characters just kind of become geniuses at the end. Like they, there's, they seem like dumb again, which I think it would have been interesting to have a character get in over their head and that's what this movie seems to be doing. Uh-huh. But then at the end, it's like, oh, they both had secret plans and they knew the whole time. But I don't believe that either of them would be able to coordinate these plans because they both seem really dumb. The uh, in the So in the manga, Misa, or I think that's her name, Misa, Misa, she she's infatuated with Kira or Light uh, and becomes, okay. she gets a death note as well. She has her own death note. And uses that right. to find him and then devotes her life to helping his cause. And he is just constantly taking advantage of her, you know, sacrificing her life, doing all this different stuff, mm-hmm. abusing her. And then in this movie, he's just like, they're just in this weird love story. Like, I think I yeah it, even even where it starts is bizarre yeah like when they talk about the kid that light kills and then they just go and sit in like the empty cafeteria and they they pull up a live stream of a crime going on like a hostage situation do they do that i feel like is there really live streams of hostage yeah, situations like can you just pull that up i think it was just on the i think it was just on okay. the news but i mean like what a coincidence it's something that recognizable i, yeah. I don't know it's it's really weird this movie isn't good. It's fine. It's just things like that. But I I just... 
the the death note itself is overcomplicated to a degree that makes this movie i think like unnecessary have unnecessary conflicts or it pushes the conflict it feel like this movie is is too layered and at the same time too dumb like it's 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 fascinating this movie fascinates me it's why i've seen it so <laughs> many times i can't i can't figure I, it the out the first time i watched it i was just shocked i was like what is this <laughs> And the second time I watched it, knowing what it was, I was still shocked because I was like, why is this like this? It doesn't make any well, sense. It's, it, and I think I... In terms to- of like an adaptation, I don't know if this was going to be like the first of a trilogy or something. Yeah. Like maybe this is sort of like an origin story to make the characters who they are more later, except for the Misa equivalent because she yeah. dies at the end. But like light at the end seems to like transition into this evil genius which from what i understand or from what i read up on is he, at the end he's kind of a little more in line with what he's like in yeah. the manga but why what was the transition the transition was he got screwed over by mia and then immediately came up with this incredibly convoluted <laughs> plan like on yeah. the spot well that that's what shocks me every time is I keep looking for clues earlier in the movie where he's like planning a, a contingency or something, but he never yeah. expects her to turn against him. And so he makes it all up right then yeah, and there. Yeah, the only the, <laughs> and it's the crazy. only clue that he's smart is that he does homework for other people in the beginning. And that's not even like that that yeah. big of a deal. Do you know what I mean? Like that's not like a This is yeah, it, this is a guy who's looking for an alias and finds a Japanese word and is like, well, if we use a Japanese word, they'll think it's in Japan. Yeah. Pe- people are aware of other <laughs> languages. Why would they assume that? You think there's no such thing as immigration? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> there, are, there, there are Japanese people in the United States and in most continents and countries. Like, why would – it's the craziest – there's just – this movie is full yeah. of stuff like that. The uh... – <laughs> it's so dumb. I think I had told you on Twitter. Um, I felt like they nice. filmed a comedy but edited a drama. Like they, it seemed. Yeah, that's true. The tone is. Yeah, it, wild. like when he. So in comparison to the manga to this movie, when he meets Ryuk, mm-hmm. he is uh, in the movie. He's terrified. He starts screaming his head off like a little mm-hmm. girl. Ryuk comes in and like you know it's, yeah. it's this big like almost a horror esque moment, but it Pretty the much. sound he makes is not horror. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like it's, no, it's it's like yeah. comedy. And um, every time I've watched it with people, we've all burst. Yeah, out no, it's thing. crazy. It's so dumb. Yeah. Um, the <laughs> in the manga, he finds the death note, reads it sees the bully and he's like oh should i kill him and he's like you know what no i shouldn't kill people i know because that will bring attention back on to me so then he goes home and he's reading all the rules and stuff and then ryuk finally shows up and he scares him but he yeah he doesn't like freak out he like composes himself pretty quickly and then shows ryuk that he's written three pages of people f- to die like he's already figured it out he's already been testing it way before right. Ryuk ever showed up and Ryuk is more of a uh, passenger to light than uh, the puppet master like he is in this one. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's really unclear what Ryuk wants mm. in this movie, like what his goal is. Like he, I, I, I think in, in the manga, they pretty clearly, like, explicitly say, or in the, I think, I watched the first couple episodes of the anime, yeah. it was on Netflix, I didn't really like it, so I, didn't, yeah. I didn't keep watching, but, um, I, I think it was pretty definitively stated that he was just, yeah, curious. he was bored, he's like, I want to see what happens, but do they say, I think they say something like that in this movie, but later on, he's, he's, he's kind of jibing light and like giving him, giving him just grief all the time and trying to convince him to give it up, to give up the note all the yeah. time too. Like it, what does he want him to do? And what does he want with the note? It's unclear. It's so they, they he has five different motivations. And yeah. He can't pick one. Yeah. In the, in the manga, he's yeah. bored in the Shimagami. I think that's how you say it in the, the yeah. death demon realm. He's just bored. So he's like, ah, I'll, I'll try it. And he steals someone else's note and gives it to Light. 
and then is just kind of like looking for entertainment. And he actually really yeah. likes light pretty much the whole time. He's like super entertained by yeah. him where uh, Ryuk in this one just feels annoyed. He seems just like, why are why you doing like, just, too? just stop. Just give it up already. <laughs> the kid, the kid's a jackass. I mean, I don't like <laughs> He's him. the but worst. It's yeah. I don't know. It's, he he kills the bully, the school bully, and then it was weirdly like Final Destination-y yes. in terms of like yeah. the gore. But also I feel like the gore is all this movie has going yeah. for it in terms of like style or something like that. Because again, with tone, the style, it, it's so weird to talk about this movie. It's such a bizarre experience to yeah. just watch. Like I, I don't know what Adam Wingard was thinking because again, like you said, is it a comedy or a drama? The credits have like bloopers and outtakes edited in, which is a really bizarre choice for like this supernatural yeah. thriller. I don't know if I'm supposed to be taking what's happening seriously or not, and I don't think he's ever answered that. So I'm, I, I, I don't know. I, I view it as a comedy. I invite people over and say we need to watch, we need to watch Death Note because it's really funny. <laughs> You'll understand. You just watch Death Note and you'll get it. Yeah. I th- but I still don't get it. I don't know if it's a parody of itself, of the concept of like the idea of making something like this because it's so goofy and on the nose, but at the same time, it, it seems to be taking itself so serious. It's like Suicide Squad yeah. in that way. Yeah, I, I think yeah. my impression of the movie is that the people made it thought the concept was dumb. So they're like, let's just make a, a crazy version of this. And Mm -hmm. then when they started editing it, there was probably some expectation to be closer to the tone or be like to be more serious. And then they just started chopping it up and making it darker than I think they could. You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't, I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to feel when you watch this. Like, yeah. And it just, but it, it it doesn't feel, I don't think it feels chopped up. I just think the way things develop just mm-hmm. make no sense. It's just really yeah. poorly written and put together, like down to little details of logic. Like when, um, when Light takes control of Watari, yeah. he just writes Watari yep. in the book. Which is an alias. He doesn't have a last name. Or, in the manga. Or, or is it like, or is his name just Watari? Like, like Cher? Well, in the <laughs> in the manga, it's an alias. Watari and L is both aliases to protect their identity. Well, that makes sense. I, I, w- I would assume that because if he's going around saying he has one name, like when he said that in the movie, I didn't know it was an alias in the manga. And I was like, oh, that, yeah. that's a fake name. And then later on in the movie, he just writes Watari in the book and it <laughs> works. So <laughs> could you write if he could have just written L? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the. There's a lot of I mean, rules in face. the manga but that later on help. Later on, when L confronts him in the restaurant and he takes off his mask, he could have just done the same thing. <laughs> there's a there's Nothing a lot of rules in the manga that help keep the story together, like because it's it's so crazy, right. you have to have very mm-hmm. clearly defined rules, otherwise, you know, it, it gets all over the place yeah. like the movie did. But like one of the things. I think they yeah. do in the movie is that they use the death note to kill other people, which you cannot do in the manga. You cannot use someone's death to kill someone else. And so okay. like that really restrains him on what he's able to do. Cause he can't just like make assassin drones to go and kill people for him. He has to know exactly who he's killing. He has to think about them and it has to be reasonable yeah. Otherwise, it just turns into a heart attack, mm-hmm. which is pretty much the only way he kills people in the manga is just through heart attacks, because that becomes like his calling card. These people who are young and, you know, like there's no reason for them to have a heart attack, just start dropping dead all over mm-hmm. the place. And in this, it was just yeah. a... I, I think it was, yeah. Well, I think they, they made the deaths more elaborate because it, I mean, having everyone just sort of keel over isn't very yeah. cinematic, I guess, to a certain extent. And there's only so many ways you can do that before it gets yeah. kind of like goofy. Although. But I think they went too far oh, yeah, in the other direction and made it too. Yeah, I was going to say, I think yeah. they went, 
especially at the it end. It got super goofy from the beginning. Like as soon as that ladder chopped the guy's yeah. head in half, I was like, oh, this is that kind of movie. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about the the yeah. ending? The, it, like I said, it, it makes... So White thinks up this really convoluted plan on the spot. Again, that's that's what's the craziest part of this movie is that on the spot he he thinks of this because it shows him freak out for like five seconds when he realizes Watari's yeah. dead. And then he he just immediately runs to the computer lab after Mia tells him like I it it's me I'm behind it and I wrote that your name yeah, you're you're gonna die so anyone can just write anything in the book sure why is she so dead set on like having the book be officially passed to her or whatever because Light can just abandon it and leave it leave it somewhere just leave it at her house for like a week and then it becomes hers right. Because they've established if you just leave it somewhere, you don't yeah. want it. Because Ryuk says that to Light directly a few times. Because I don't know what Ryuk wants. <laughs> he tells him to leave it somewhere. Just leave the note somewhere and yeah. move on with your life. He could just do that and Mia could just pick it up next if she knows where it is. There's no reason to go through all this cat and mouse stuff between them and be like, give the book to me or you die. And then, okay, now I'm going to make you die if I do give you the book. And this entire... He could have just not made the Ferris wheel collapse, I think. And it's implied that Ryuk is doing that. So what are Ryuk's powers? Like, what are the extent of his abilities? It it doesn't make sense. I don't... Yeah, I have no idea. I don't have any answers for those. (laughs) It doesn't... He falls in the water and then... But he also says that he doesn't die. So can you make... So can the Death Note also has the ability to make people survive death, which seems counterproductive to what its ultimate goal is. And then he controls two people. I I think it was dumb of them to bring in the plot line of like you can control people forty eight hours before their yeah. death kind of thing. Like that was just a really weird choice because it just opens the door. Like you can just make the entire world like yeah. zombie slaves. And make them kill other people because there's, for as many rules as they outline, it seems like there are no rules. Or whenever something comes up, there's just a rule to counter it or explain why yeah. they can do it. Like the whole idea of burning a page with a name on it. So does that mean you have to devote an entire page to one name if you're going to burn it? What if it's an emergency? What happens if you write down several names and then burn the page with several names on it before those people die? Do all the people <laughs> live? Like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense, and I hate it. Yeah, I love the, uh... it. I can't stop watching it because I have to figure it out. I have to decode the it. The burning page thing I don't think is in the manga at all. The Okay, that would make sense because it's ridiculous. Con- like, Why would you put that contingency in there? The controlling people's death is somewhat, but I, I want to say it's only like six minutes. You get like... That would be more reasonable. You have about a six hours. minute window of what they do, but it's it's like generally steps leading up to their death. Um, yeah, it has to be related, but you can just make someone your zombie slave for 48. Like it, that's not, it's the same thing with like burning the page and having the death be canceled. Like why would you put in a contingency that would make the death note do something that it yeah. shouldn't do? Why would you need to control someone for 48 hours beforehand? Yeah. It's, oh man, this movie is bad. <laughs> Although it, the way his dad figures out too, that it was him at the end, I, yeah. Uh, not the worst part of the movie, but it was still strange for the dad to figure it out because that I don't think the dad ever knows in the manga that Light is actually Kira. Well, it just seemed like a bit of a leap. Yeah. Logically, like it, it could have been an accident just as easily as the yeah. other ones. <laughs> there's no way to because there's no calling card. There's no way to isolate what is and what isn't yeah. an accident. Yeah, death. because people die. There, there must have been so many yeah. other deaths in this universe <laughs> that were not related to him. Yeah. That he was got... nobody, is this movie implying that nobody else was dying except <laughs> these people for a while? Because you would just rule any death at all. That was slightly odd. Oh, it was Kira, I guess. Yeah. Well, what if it wasn't? But, uh, do you think L L... so someone it, fell off a it ends on a, a cliffhanger with L potentially writing lights name down and Ryuk shows up while mm-hmm. light is on the, uh, in the hospital bed. So if it if it's following yeah. the manga, Light ends up killing L. Getting L killed. Okay, but here's mm. my question. 
so L at the end, I just remember this. I forgot about this. So L at the end bre- breaks into, I think, Mia's house and finds the, yeah. the textbook, even though that's like such a weird, again, yeah. a weird leap. And speaking of weird leaps, that whole chase scene is hilarious that they have. But where Light has like a blade, or L has like a blade runner gun, it's so. This movie's so. But it's also just a gun. Like it's not like a laser gun or anything special. It's just a gun. It's. But why does it look like that? But then, so when he L breaks into the end, he finds the the one piece of paper from the Death Note, and it's implied like, oh, is he gonna write Light's name or whatever? Would that work? It's not in the Death Note. It's just the paper cursed. Like it doesn't. It should give me actual. It rules. should work, according to the manga. You can okay. you can tear pages out. So that's how. So in the movie, there's Ray Palmer, Palmer, who's the FBI guy following Light, mm-hmm. and that's a much right. bigger plot point in the manga. Obviously, it's a lot longer than two hours, but. Uh, yeah, because well, they they have to condense the whole search down to like twenty minutes. L figures yeah. it out. He he's like, it's someone in this region. Okay, it's someone in this. Uh, well, I mean, they track it down to say it's someone in this city, and they say the news wasn't broadcasting this like this crime outside of this area. Which okay, I guess it was a local news site or whatever. I think that was the. But it was live streaming. I thought it was the um, the police department. That they were sending information about that that gang to the police department, like specific like specific regions was his plan. I think that's how he did it in the no, manga. No, I'm talking about when uh, I'm talking about when L says like when L talks about the the guy who had the hostages, and he says th- that the the news footage of that oh, incident was only yeah, broadcast yeah, yeah. like in the Seattle yeah. area. But it was live. I think it was live stream on the internet, so anyone anywhere could yes. have been watching. Yeah. Like unless unless you're telling me he was watching it from an actual like legitimate, like secure online channel on a TV yeah. online, which on a laptop, which yeah. I don't buy. I don't buy that. That's not what happened. He was live streaming it from some other source, or there, or the people who wrote this don't understand how the internet works, the, and think... they think you can just click on it, like <laughs> you, think you can just click on like a cable box, which is not how that works at all. But if that is in this, in, maybe in the world of this movie, that's what happens. That's how it yeah. works. Who knows? Who am I to say? Yeah, I, this movie. It, it, there's, they like, hmm. they take elements from the anime, from the manga, and don't yeah. qualify it at all. They're just like, oh, well, this worked there, where the manga spent so much time, you know, laying the groundwork for it and establishing it all and all that stuff. Um, but. Like I was saying right. with uh, the FBI in the manga, they he ends up figuring out who he is and he figures out that there's like 12 other FBI agents. So he's like, well, if I kill mine, they're going to know directly or it's going to link directly back to me. So I need to kill all of them at once. And so he gets, he gets Ray, the guy who was following him, to write down all the other names onto that piece of paper by controlling him with the death note. And then they all die at the same time. And so because the paper was torn out, he was able to write on it. Um, Right. But one of the things that they did change is if you touch the death note, you see the Shimagani, you see Ryu and that they just cut that out completely, which seemed like a weird choice because there would be conversations between light and Ryu in this, in the movie and then he would have to just t- like recount everything he said to Misa or to, to Mia. And it's just like, right. what, what's the point? Why, right. why cut that out? Just leave it in. At a certain point, wouldn't she know he was talking to him? <laughs> like, cause she keeps asking like, what are you, what are you talking about? Or what are you saying? And he just says, I'm yeah. not going to read. Like she would know at a certain point, It's, but it, it, this movie is like simultaneously made for people who know about death note yeah. and people who don't, which is really weird. Because I feel like there's a lot I'm just expected to know going in. Mm, mm-hmm. But this, like I said, this is the first piece of Death Note media I actually absorbed because I was really yeah. curious about it. And uh, just based on concept alone of the Death Note. And I was like, well, I don't I certainly don't want to watch anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> it really turned me off the whole concept. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, man. I, 
I enjoyed the manga. I probably won't ever watch anime. I don't really mm-hmm. care. I know it's a little different than the manga. I mean, you get the story. Yeah. But the movie is awful. It's so bad. It's bad for a movie. Yeah, this was... And it's terrible for an adaptation. It's barely an adaptation. <laughs> I, the the ending of this movie is so incredible. Yeah, I I it, it it's the biggest laugh I get every time I watch it. Why is that? I laugh a lot when I watch this movie, but I it's just a way. Just he says the the line the you humans are so interesting. And I, even I knew that was like a death note mm. thing. And then you have this weird shot of light like reacting, like the scene's gonna keep going and yeah. reveal something. And then it just cuts to, like, directed by Adam Wingard yeah. or something. And I was like, what's this? <laughs> what? It just ends. Especially the soundtrack. The soundtrack is another thing where I wonder if I'm supposed to take this seriously. Yeah, it's all, like, 80s music, because right? It's all, like, 80s classic rock or, like, 80s pop hits. Especially um, the power of love at the end. Like, what does that have to do with what's happening? I don't think there's but, any uh, answers the, for this The funniest movie. one... The funniest one is when they're on the the Seattle the Seattle Great Wheel, and it's it's I don't want to live without yeah. your love comes on as they're <laughs> falling off, and it's this terrible slow motion. It's just the worst, and I mean I I feel bad for Nat Wolf, what? the guy who plays Light to a certain. Sorry, extent. I missed what you said. I feel a little bad. I I feel bad for oh, Nat Wolf, the yeah. guy who plays Light, a little bit because um. His brother Alex starred in Hereditary, which is easily like one of the best horror movies of the decade. Yeah, and, like the best horror, my favorite horror movie now Not of a all fan, time. But... And no, I didn't like it. No, okay. <laughs> well, I loved it, and it's just like imagine, imagine making Death Note, and then your brother goes and makes like the most critically lauded and like audience loved horror movie in years, and you knew the year before you were in the Death Note <laughs> movie. It's just, it's a bit Well, I think he, I feel, I feel like him. he could be a good actor. Like, I, I can't think of. Oh, he's of not. It. I don't think he was, just with what he was working with wasn't very good. I think he was trying to bring something to it. He just wasn't right for the part. Well, and, it felt like the direction that he had was think, so inconsistent yeah. of. Yeah, well, his character's terrible every character in this movie is really yeah. inconsistent especially l because l goes between being like the the hyper analytical um like the hyper analytical uh sorry my, my camera's cut out there oh, for a second no, you're fine. um l goes uh L goes from being like this hyper analytical, like borderline uh, Asperger's or autistic character, just freaking out and being super hyper emotional. And it, it, when that turn happens, I mean, with Watari's death, it, it, I guess that would kind of make sense. Like you would, you would assume this is the one thing that could break yeah. that character, but he'd already been freaking out so much here and there and like slowly deteriorating, but we don't have any time yeah, he, to so it, see him before he's like He that. doesn't have any... So, who cares? <laughs> he doesn't have any emotional breakdowns like that in the manga. He's always... Yeah. Like, always yeah. just on it. Like, he's always 100% on. And they even... I mean, I, I've watched a few reviews of this. I think I watched uh, Cosmonauts, Cosmonaut Variety mm-hmm. Hours, which was really funny. Um and he was talking about how they it's ridiculous that they even have to um, give an explanation as to why he eats candy. Yeah. And then, like it gives you an insulin spike that'll keep you awake. I'm like, <laughs> what are you what are you talking about? That's none of that works. Yeah, it, it same, seemed like they were trying to justify how this would happen. Yeah. And their justifications yeah. didn't make any sense. Like And surprisingly, Lakeith Stanfield, who is probably one of my favorite actors mm. out there right now. I think he's really incredible. Just terrible in this. Like, he's just really Who bad was he? in this. Like, he was entirely wrong. He oh, okay, out. yeah. Yeah, when, when he gave his in, speech... Uh, he's in, like, Sorry to Bother You and Get Out and Short Turn 12. Yeah. and a bunch of stuff. But he's just not good. At, and he was playing it, like, he's um, he's kind of a method guy. He's been known to go a little yeah. method here and there. 
and the interviews with him, I recommend you watch because they're really crazy <laughs> and really cringy. The, There's one where someone talks about, like, someone says Shinigami. He's, like, crouching up on the chair, like, all up. He's like, you're not supposed to say that. And he's, like, freaking <laughs> out. It's really, it's 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 a sight to behold. It's like Jared yeah. Leto, but worse, in a way. Because you're like, oh, you're better than this. But Jared Leto isn't better than what he does. <laughs> and you're like, I, oh, I, well, Keith, you're better than this. I felt like... <laughs> you're above this for the Death Note movie. The Come diner on. scene, when he gives a speech about how, you know, he's going to catch him. He knows it's him and all that. I felt like him, the L, he did really good. Like that felt like a really strong moment, but just opposed to yeah. light, it was just like so goofy and like it so it didn't match at all the tone. Like, well, he's really he's really smug mm-hmm. in that moment, which is sort of in line with his character. I mean, characters when they have their breakdowns just kind of lose everything about themselves. Like I guess that's kind of the definition yeah. of a breakdown. <laughs> now that I think about it, but like. But they, they don't, like, their recovery, you expect characters to reach their lowest point like that and come back and use their strengths. Like, you expect L to execute this, like, amazing, analytical, hyper-stylized, like, plan yeah. with his mind. But he just chases down light on foot with a gun. Or, he, no, he steals a police car and he can't <laughs> drive. And he's just crashing through everything. And they have a terrible chase through just... Seattle and then he corners him and then some random guy comes out of a restaurant and just happens to be really like a fan yeah. of Kira and hits him with a broom and I keep and then you keep reminding me of stuff in this movie that Blade doesn't Runner make gun, any sense and then the ridiculous ending happens I, I just I want to watch this movie again now <laughs> talking about this movie makes me want to watch not. it again talking about this movie makes wanna, me regret watching it the first time <laughs> Alan, I just want to understand. I don't think you can. I don't think I anyone does. I just want to get it. I just want to. I don't. I feel like if I can crack this, I can crack straight maybe. theory. I feel like I can figure everything out. It'll all make yeah, sense. Yeah, I don't think even the the filmmakers have an idea of why they did what they did. I can figure out Dark Matter. <laughs> I can figure out Death Note. I know it. I can give people the answers they need. I just need to figure out Death Note there 2017. There you go. That's my edge. Well, what do you, how do you rank this? Rate it. What's your, Oh. where do you put it at? I mean, it is, it's hilariously yeah. bad. This was my favorite bad movie of 2017. <laughs> is This was, because I, I think I've told you about this, my, my Suicide Squad theory. Ever since Suicide Squad, there is a Suicide Squad uh-huh. every year now. Because that's just the yeah. metric. That's the, um, the benchmark. And, Death Note was the first post Suicide Squad. Suicide <laughs> Squad, I think 2018's is definitely Venom. Oh, okay, Venom. I haven't is, seen uh, that yet. Definitely taking that title. It's oh you oh <laughs> that good. Oh, I want to do an episode with you on Venom, dude. That'd be great. What's that? Because <laughs> I got a lot to yeah. say about Venom. I have a lot to say about Venom. I have thoughts. I have many. I, thoughts. I had like it came out here. The, it's pretty rare that we get movies. We get like one every two weeks now. That's in English, right? And uh, it came out, mm-hmm. and I was just like, I don't, I, I can't, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to put money into this. I don't want to put time into this. But if it's for a podcast, I I'm totally down. Opening night. <laughs> It was amazing. It was everything I wanted and more, and I think you'll love it. If you love Death Note, you'll oh, love it. Oh, that's Venom. not a good sell. I, I, no, I mean, when you go, when you were going mm-hmm. into Death Note like with this good source yeah. material in your head, just disregard... Just I think the perfect primer for Venom to watch is uh, watch uh, Catwoman and okay. Daredevil. Okay. Yeah, back yeah. Back. the Ben Affleck, and then watch Venom, and you'll and you'll be shocked by how similar <laughs> they all are. <laughs> oh man, it's like a movie from 2005. It's crazy. Venom is insane, and I love. Did they fix it. the CGI, or was the CGI in the trailers no. that looked awful the final CGI? Yeah, it's yeah, it's bad. Because that's what it's everyone really kept bad. saying. I was like, man, the CGI looks bad, and they're like, no, no, this is just. It's pretty, not finished yet because it's a trailer. You know, just give them some more time. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty. It's a little bit better, but it's it's overall pretty rough. But we'll save yeah, that yeah. for the Venom episode. We can't <laughs> give everything away. You have to see it in its full glory. So then you recommend people to watch Death Note. 
I... If you're not familiar with Death Note at all and you like bad movies, get a bunch of friends together, get a lot of booze, and watch Death Note, and just have yeah. a fun time. Because if you, if you care about things like logic <laughs> or sense in film... You'll 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 find that this movie doesn't do a lot, and you'll find a lot to laugh yeah. at pretty quick. And then it's just kind of a, it's a very easy watch. It doesn't it doesn't drag. It keeps going. It's structured terribly, yeah. but like eventually you realize, oh, I guess this is the end. <laughs> and then it just kind of stops. Yeah. And you're like, good, good. And if you're like me, you'll watch it countless more times just to figure yeah. it out. But I wouldn't. I think that, that might be one. part of my problem. Is I watch these by myself. I'm like just alone in a dark room. <laughs> That's depressing. <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> watching watching this alone. Yeah, I did not enjoy it. I I didn't have fun. I watched it twice. Yeah, that makes sense. Because like we were, I was saying in the beginning, we we were gonna do this a, a while ago, mm -hmm. and then just scheduling stuff kept coming up, and uh, so I watched it twice to be more prepared, and yeah. uh, it was bad. I did not enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. I, I was happy to come back to it. I'm probably going to watch that's, it again that's later crazy. tonight. <laughs> Maybe. Why not? Who cares? Well, how can how can people find out about you and all your your Flash weekly breakdown videos and Arrow? Oh, God, don't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, you can find me on YouTube. My channel is Ross McIntyre. I've been very, very inactive lately because school has been insane but i have uh, some stuff planned i've been saying this for months i have stuff planned i'm going to make it i'm gonna upload it yeah. i miss doing it i miss getting into that sort of uh groove and i'm gonna upload like stuff i've been making for film class probably soon and uh like you you will see what i've been working on hopefully in the future uh, and what my, where my time has been going and i will continue to put more effort into it especially in the new year i have things planned to keep myself on track and produce more stuff in 2019 because i need to need to crack the whip on yeah, myself yeah cool man well i appreciate you coming on again yeah it's always fun to talk to you sorry uh, if i was I a, a little uh time. spacey i my the audio was good 95 percent of the time and then sometimes i was like i don't know if he's still talking or if it's my turn yet because <laughs> they would just drop out. That's all right. But uh, yeah, I, I yeah maybe next time. I yeah, I hope so. I should be able to figure it out. Get it. I screwed my computer up. This okay. is all my fault. Uh, but yeah. So again, thank you for coming on. This is a ton of fun. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, me and Taylor will be back uh, in a couple of days with Fast and Furious Six. Should be on Sunday. Fast and Furious Six.